So, Frank. What's up? Uh, here we are again, two years later. Well, has it really been two years? It, it has feels been. Like it was- it feels like it was just yesterday when I actually, saw the shitty it actu- movie. It actually really does, and I don't know why that is. I don't know either. Cause, cause like everything else in my life feels like it's it's like two years ago feels like forever, but but not these movies. Uh, oh. Do you, you think uh, it'd be like just dust in the wind? But yeah. I guess not. <laughs> so do you, do you want to tell the whoever the hell is listening to this what we're talking about? Um. Well, as you might or might not know. We, we, we did a podcast two years ago about how much we hated The Amazing Spider-Man 1, and now with the release of the second movie, we're going to be giving our opinions on that one as well, and you can only guess what they are. <laughs> I'll give a little bit of a spoiler. They're not great. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we, we got a lot of opinions about Spider-Man in general, because like, it's, it's always been something that the two of us really like. Mm-hmm. Um... Like, I know he's always been like my favorite superhero, and I know he's one of one of your favorites. So yeah, he's my he's definitely my second favorite. Yeah. So like, whenever one of these comes out, we we always seem to have a lot to say. Um, so just before we get too much into spoilers about this movie, if for whatever reason you actually care about that, um, our our basic opinion of this movie is it's it's, it's not very good. Uh, it's I I don't know. Do you think it's better or worse than the first one? I thought it was better, but, I mean, a lot of things that were wrong with the first one are still quite prevalent with this movie as well. So, it improved in some regards, but most of, in most regards, it's either exactly the same or worse. Yeah. So I, I feel like, like a lot of the problems in the first one are definitely still repeating here. It does, it does feel like uh, they they did take some of the criticism of the first one to heart and try to improve things. Like the first thing I like the first thing I noticed that that thought okay maybe they're going in the right direction is when they first showed off the costume and it looked perfect. And it's like yeah you you listen to the people who thought the costume in the first movie was shit, and this mm-hmm. one looks better. So maybe they would improve the rest of the movie. Um, but but no. <laughs> when I, when I first started watching it, I felt the same thing. But not for that, not necessarily for that reason, but, like, I noticed right off the bat, like, when he was fighting in the very start of the movie, he was using a lot more of those quips, and as opposed to the first movie where he had that one scene with the, with the, um, with the car thief, and he was joking around with him, and you called it, you were like, that's gonna be the only funny scene in the movie, and what do you know, it was. So, in this one, they were trying a little harder with that. But they still kind of fell flat. Yeah, that was that was actually the first thing I took away from the movie is we, we talked about with the first one that the tone was really wrong. Like mm-hmm. they took it way too seriously, and I feel like in this one it's it like goes to the complete opposite direction. Where it's like now it's like too over the top. It's too cheesy. It's hard to take anything it really seriously is. at all. There were a lot of scenes where I just felt like, all right, this is just absolutely ridiculous, and we'll get in, and we'll get into them later. But most of the time, they involve Dane DeHaan. Oh, oh, good. Okay, so I'm not crazy then, because like a lot of the people who who didn't even like this movie were like, yeah, he gave a really good performance as Harry Osborn. I'm like, are you are you serious? Were we watching the same movie? I, I know, right? It's like, oh my god, that that one scene where he had the gun to the guy's head and he was humming like the Jeopardy theme. I was like, are we really doing this? Yeah, it's like like a lot of the uh, moments like that. A lot of the dialogue feel feels like it was taken out like of a, a bad '90s superhero movie, like like the Joel Schumacher Batman movies. Like that's yeah, what it, it was it was like. it was very Mister Freeze. Yeah. Um, <sighs> So what, what do you think? What do you think was the biggest problem with the second movie? Um, I have a lot of them, but mostly the fact that it was just a complete and utter mess with um Ben Parker and oh uh, no not, not Ben Parker whatever his dad's name is Richard Parker yeah that was a bit of a mess when when he went down into the subway <laughs> and like when he when he first of all when he found the subway tokens in the calculator. I was just like, all right, that's not contrived at all. No big deal. So he goes down to the Rose to the Roosevelt subway because you know he was just supposed to know that you know the whole D train shit, and 
what do you know, there's a secret fucking lab in the subway, and there's the video files there and whatnot, and it's just like, okay, yeah. we need to calm down a little bit here. Yeah, like, I, I don't know if there's one specific thing that stands out to me as the biggest problem, but definitely one of it is that, like, there there's, like, not a lot even really happens in this movie, but there's still way too much stuff in there. And well, that, it's two and a half hours. It's two and a half hours of, of, of basically nothing. Really? But, but it, it's bogged down, like, w- with that whole subplot about him finding out about his parents, like, what happened to them. That had mm. no relevance in the actual story of the movie. Like, the only reason it was there is because they, they had that loose end from the first film, and they needed to resolve right. it. Like, but in, in terms of the plot, it could have just not been there at all. Yeah, the there, and, like, the, the same thing with Electro. His story was, like not even connected to the movie at all. He was just... It, it, felt like, it felt like three different movies that were kind of just connected together. Yeah. And... That, that was my whole point. Like, I noticed that, too. Like, it was like someone wanted to make an Electro movie, someone wanted to make a Green Goblin movie, and someone wanted to make, like, a Sinister Six origin movie. And it's right. like, why don't we just put them all together? And, wh- and, so, and also someone wanted to get into the whole Richard Parker backstory, too. Yeah. And we'll it's like, like, like well. this is the same thing that happened to Spider-Man 3, and it's like, why didn't you learn from it? Yeah, no, it's like, it, we got to the same point that it took Sam Raimi three movies to get to in two now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, I, I, I don't know if we're making some form of, fuck, uh, some form of fucked up progress, but, <laughs> you know. Like, reverse progress, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> um... It's like one step forward, ten steps back. <laughs> yeah, and like even with all those things going on, none of those were even the focus of the movie. the The focus of the movie was like the, the whole his relationship with Gwen. Yeah, it's like this is a romantic comedy that sometimes turns into a superhero movie. And they still had absolutely no chemistry they whatsoever. Still... Okay, so I don't. Please tell me, like we talked about the first movie, how he comes out like a very creepy stalker. And then he's so really creepy. He admits it to Gwen that he stalks her multiple times a day, and she has no problem with it. Yeah, no. And it's like, how are we supposed to take this seriously when you don't even like make these real human beings that we can like even understand? It's 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 moments like those that like any time it comes close to being like a movie, like stuff like that just takes you immediately out of it. They're trying too hard to make them, like, seem like they're a really cute couple that goes well together and plays off each other's strengths and whatnot, and it's really fucked up, honestly, yeah. because it, sh- it just doesn't work. You're trying to make two people that shouldn't work, work, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I- exactly. And and the problem is, like, this movie, it-, it completely hinges on the fact that you have to care about their relationship. Right. So if you if you don't, there's no emotional weight to the movie at all. Um... So, I, I, I guess I want to go back to to Electro here a bit, because um, we'll, we'll talk about each of the villains, but the thing about Electro is, like, e- even putting aside the fact that he has really no connection to the story at all, he's, he just basically, he's there, and then he's there to fight Spider-Man and have a flashy battle, that's it. Right, and, um, then, and then he's in the prison for a little while, yeah. and then, what do you know, he's out again. Like, yeah. Oh, before before you even go to that, please tell me you laughed at the scene where he was. He said, "Remember me." Yes. <laughs> it was like the same the delivery. The other end. The other end. <laughs> Remember me. And then, oh, when he was in the prison, and he says that line, like, "Don't you know I'm Electro?" I'm Electro. I was like, I I couldn't I couldn't. That was like so over the top. Like I don't even think they realized that that line rhymed. And came off way funnier than it was. No, the, the best. The best line was, "It's my birthday. Time to blow out the candles." Yeah, that, that's 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 the Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze line. That's it. And it's like, ugh. but 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 the biggest problem with Electro is he has the same problem as the Lizard did in the last movie, where they make him evil for no reason. Yeah, no, he really was just absolutely evil for no reason at all, yeah. and. When his music started playing, when he first got to, like, Times Square, and there was, like, the whispering in the background, I was like, what the shit is this? So, yeah, his whole justification, I guess, is that he hears voices in his head that turns out to be a dubstep track or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> like... <laughs> but, like, he, he goes from, like, that... <laughs> he goes from, like, a really shy, like, like 
and timid nerd to like right. an evil murderer in the blink of an eye. <sighs> Making fucking music with the Tesla coil. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, little... I didn't catch that until someone pointed it out. You didn't catch the no. fucking itsy bitsy spider bullshit? Uh, I, I think by that point in the movie I was just so zoned out I Maybe. wasn't paying attention anymore. <laughs> But it's like they have so many moments like that where it's just so comical and, and there's no thought to how anything fits together. Um, how any, how anything sort of like real character development can happen in a movie like this. Um, so, th so, so, th so that's Electro. Then you have Rhino in this movie for no reason. Who was there at the very, very end, and that's about it. Yeah. Uh, can we can we talk about how fucking awful that that robot suit was? And can we also talk about that fucking stupid ass kid? Yeah. Um. And the only line that I could understand that he said was, "I am the Rhino." <laughs> that's it. it. It's everything in this movie is just so over the top like that. Like. Why? Why was the, the the only reason this Rhino was in the movie is to set up the Sinister Sticks? But <sighs> why? Why would you waste our time with that? And then, the, and then, that like that's the end of the movie. It just ends. Like they don't even finish the yeah, fight no. with him. It's so abrupt. It yeah. really is. One thing I did kind of like about the movie is that the web slinging honestly looked a lot more fluid than it did in any other Spider-Man movie to date. Uh. But but the CGI was awful otherwise. Yeah, like, I, there was a, the, the, the opening scene where he's chasing down the truck. Um, I love it when they have, like, the shots at street level of him web-slinging. Right. Those are really cool. I didn't like it when they give him, like, the forced perspective. Yeah, like, right. Like, that that was that was a bit jarring. No, but, but, like, but like in, from the perspective of, like, the city people looking up at Spider-Man doing the web-slinging. Oh, I yeah, that, that, that was, like, perfect. Like, I, that's, like, I know in the old movies, like, it was mostly, like, like sort of, like, flying through the air with Spider-Man. Right. So I, I like the fact that it's it's a different perspective that way. Um, but you're totally right. When, when he has the battle with Electro at the power plant... Right. That's a video game cutscene. That's, that's exactly what that looks like. It's like, at no point do I think that's actually taking place in reality. <laughs> what about when he's fighting the rhino and he web slings a fucking manhole cover? Oh, God. It's so, it looks so awful. Yeah, it really does. Like, I, I, I guess this is becoming a tradition because, like, the other night I went back and watched the first Spider-Man movie again. Like, the 2002 one, which does not okay. have great CGI. But it's still good, though. Yeah, it's like... It, it, it's passable. It's passable, especially for the time. But right. this, this like, this looks like something that was like ten years ago, even worse. So I, yeah, I, 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 I honestly, if I were to compare the the CGI from the first Spider-Man movie, the 2002 one, and this one, this 2014 one, mm -hmm. I think the 2002 one would probably come out on top. Yeah. I I always laugh at the scene in the 2002 one where he throws the fucking pumpkin bomb and then the guys become skeletons. Yeah. Like I always laugh at that. Mule, Mule fucking linked me to like a webm of that scene just earlier tonight. And it was so good. <laughs> uh, like like stuff like that in the old movies is a bit goofy, but like I, I guess I kind of had this argument with someone where they called the old movies cheesy. But and, they're supposed to be kind of cheesy. Yeah, it's a superhero it, movie. It's, it's more like it's more goofy. But the thing is, like when when you do it with actual sincerity, it works. When you when you have like actors who can actually pull it off, it works. Right. These movies these movies don't have that. So it's just like it's just like so it, it's cheesy to the point where it's it's not it's even funny. forced. Yeah, it's forced though. Because it's, it's like. They're trying to make it into, like, this serious movie, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they're also trying to be really cheesy with it, too. Yeah. And, I mean, the first movie didn't have this problem because it was just trying to be all realistic, but this one is just trying to be, like, it. it's like they're trying to listen to the fans and make it a little more comic booky, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they're trying to keep the serious undertones, and it just feels like this mishmash of shit, and it's just like, okay. Yeah, it, it's a really difficult thing to pull off, and you got to have the right people behind it to make it work. Right. And, like, there's just, there's none of that behind these films. Um, and I think, a, like, a lot of it has to do with the fact that, like, normally I like to put, I don't like to factor the business side into it.
But mm. these movies aren't made to actually tell like a good Spider-Man story. They're they're made because like they need to keep the license and they want to rip off the Avengers and make like their own universe now. And right. this whole movie was basically a two and a half hour trailer for the next Spider-Man movie. Like it feels like that. Everything is done just to set up stuff that not, not even happening in this movie. Um, it's like a really it's like a really really cynical viewpoint. But it, it totally comes across when you're watching the film. There's, yeah, just, no. there's no soul to it. it. It really does just feel entirely forced. And I, I, and everything about it just feels forced. From Electro, to his relationship with Gwen, to his relationship with Harry, which disintegrates within a second for no reason whatsoever. Um, like, everything. Like, yeah. his, how, him trying to find his father... Like, everything just feels completely contrived. Yeah, and... it's basically someone came out, like, they, they came up with all these scenes that they wanted to do, but they had no idea how to actually connect them. Yeah, and so, it's like, let's just put all of them in. Yeah, it's just like, it flows from scene to scene, but with no actual flow to it. Right. It's just, here's one thing that happens, and here's the next, and we eventually we get to the climax, and eventually we set up the next movie, and that's that's all it is. Um, but uh, let, let's, let's talk about Harry Osborn, because... I, I feel like I do feel crazy because a lot of people like that performance, and I felt like it was the worst thing in the movie. Yeah, like, almost. It felt like he was acting in an entirely different film. <laughs> almost. So I actually hold the coal while my uh, my manservant holds the blow dryer. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. So fucking stupid. Like. Like I, I know that, like that Harry Osborn's not the most morally centered character. I know, but he's like, like a total sleazeball in this movie. Like they try to make him like they, they because he has to become evil. They try to make right. him look evil beforehand so that they really don't have to spend time getting to that point. Um, and he's just fucked up. Man. Yeah, and, and like. The, the, one of the reasons this movie feels so crowded is because whereas the like the original movies took basically three whole films to tell Harry's story, this one condenses right. it into a single movie. And it just doesn't work. It totally doesn't know? work. Like if they had if they had introduced Harry in the first film and like you actually had a sense for him and Peter's friendship, it, it probably works a bit better in this movie. Right. But basically, they tell you that they're friends, but it's not really believable that they're friends. No, yeah, it, 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 their, their friendship feels totally forced. Yeah. Just like everything else. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's 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 the biggest thing to take away from it. And then, like, the, he becomes a Green Goblin, and he's in the movie for five minutes, and he's only in the movie for one point, and that's to kill Gwen Stacy. Right. Like... By the way, can we talk about how fucking blatant that speech was at the beginning? Oh! We all feel like we're immortal. The, the <laughs> one... That was, the, that was, like, the first thing I mentioned in that list of things I had problems with uh, in this movie. The one line she says, what makes that life valuable is that it ends. And it's oh like... Oh my god. You can't, you can't foreshadow to something that, one, people already know is going to happen, and two, if you if you blatantly spell it out to the audience, it's not fucking foreshadowing. It's like the people that... It's like people are all, um... Hey, we know, we know Gwen Stacy's going to die, but we don't know if it's going to happen in this movie yet. And then there are the people that don't know if she's going to die. With that speech, everyone has their answer in the first two minutes of the movie. Yeah, and it's like, even if you wanted to care about Peter and Gwen, you just completely robbed the movie of it now. Because like you know what's now gonna, you know you know, you know what's gonna happen. So like why you what everything in this movie is such a waste of time. I also well I mean I guess we'll get to Gwen Stacy's actual death later, mm -hmm. but I kind of don't really like how they did it. I mean, look, I think the aesthetic of like the the whole clock tower scene in general, I think that was kind of neat, but uh, it's a bit cliche, but yeah. I I know, but I, for what. For what the movie was, it's more than I was expecting. Yeah. But I, I, I thought it was kind of neat. And I don't really like how it took away from the whole Peter has this personal involvement in her death that the comic books did. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, there's no question what happens in this movie to her. Like, it's, mean, it's, it's not his fault. Um, 
Yeah, whereas in the comic books, it was entirely, like, I mean, it, it, was, it was later revealed that it wasn't his fault, but at the time, you were like, he fucked up big time. Yeah. And it, that, just, that just adds so much more of a layer to his character, mm-hmm. and it would have, if they did that, it would have probably given him the development that he needed, but they didn't do it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that, that would have carried forward, forward really well. Um, and, and I will give, like, Andrew Garfield some credit. I, I think his performance in that particular scene was not bad. Right. He sold it better than I thought it would. That was, that was like, the one part of the movie that was not overacted. I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, did you did you notice that when he was shooting the web down to catch her, it, it like, turned into a fucking hand? Yeah, I saw that like, shit. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, why are you, why are you taking this, this, this emotional scene and now making it cartoonish, too? <sighs> and, like, he... And then, like, I, I guess, like, the Green Goblin had, like, a lame defeat, and I, I guess it's Spider-Man turned him over. Uh, it's not really clear how yeah, it, it, yeah, it's weren't really not prison. clear at all. It's, it's like, okay, well, Gwen Stacy's dead. I guess Spider-Man's gonna have to deal with this off-screen. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like how it was like, oh, the whole Green Goblin shit comes and goes. And, like, I mean, I thought it was weird enough that the data file that his dad gave him was activated when he brought it to his skin. I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like, did you notice that? Yep. I, I was like, what? How would that even possibly work? He brought it to his, like, goblin scales, and suddenly it activated, and he was like, okay. That was another thing that, I guess, hit me after I had seen the movie. Like, first of all, I guess basically the disease that Norman Osborn has already turns him into the Green Goblin. Right. So I don't get the point of that. Um, but but secondly, like, he's like a 60-year-old man, and now it finally kills him. But the movie hinges on right. Harry needing, like, a solution to that problem now. Now! So he yeah. starts dying right away for no reason. I know, but even, like, Norman said, like, the curse started acting up when I was your age. Yeah. So it's like he knows that he's got at least another, like, 40 years or so, At know? least, yeah. Um, and, and, then, and then later on, um, after he meets with Spider-Man, and Spider-Man refuses to give him his blood... And then right. he, go, he he bails. He, he goes to break Electro out of prison. Electro's like, you know, I had a friend who betrayed me once too, and, and, and he like, goes, "Me too." Yeah, but like, as if Peter was the one who betrayed him. Yeah, he blames Peter for what Spider Man did, even though he doesn't know they're the same yet. It's right. like it was probably a scene that was written before, and they just didn't pay attention right. to how. I thought did. at that point that he knew that he was Spider Man. Yeah, but, but the movie doesn't give you any reason to believe that. Right, and and it was shown that he doesn't believe that because he only finds it out. After he goes to the Electro scene, and he's like, Oh, you're Peter Parker. Oh, look, Gwen's here. Like, they made a big deal to show that, but mm-hmm. in the meantime, he's just like... Like, when he's um when he's being taken away in front of Electro, and he's like, I need you! I need you! Like, what the fuck was that? I, like, I didn't know if he was trying to manipulate Electro or if that's what he was really feeling at that moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, this whole movie is... It like, was just really weird. It's a whole... It's a complete waste of Spider-Man's best villain. Um, and and even, even with uh, Electro... So, Electro never felt like he was any real threat to Spider-Man because right. I, I guess Spider-Man's suit protected him from electrocution? It's the movie's kind of vague on that. Right. The only problem he has is that he shorts out his web shooters, and then he finds that out because Gwen tells him. Yeah, the... in a really contrived scene. <laughs> so, so Peter's there. He's trying to he's trying to fix his web shooters. So he has to watch a video on YouTube about how batteries work. That was another big fucking foreshadowing <laughs> thing. So stupid. So fucking stupid. It's like. You can tell that the people who make these movies have no idea anything about the character of Spider-Man. It's like, and they also and they also completely think that they're all every single member of their audience is completely stupid. Yeah, it's it's one of those films. So I just I just don't I just don't understand like why no one looked at the real problems of the first movie and said, 
hey, people really didn't like the stuff. Maybe we should go in a different direction. Right. And I feel like, okay, so now this movie is getting way worse reviews than the first one, and I'm still right. not entirely sure they're going to learn that lesson. And I mean, I still think that in spite of all of that, I kind of enjoy this movie more than I enjoyed the first one. I don't like, know. It, it was still a mess, but I still thought, you know what, they were trying a little harder. You know what I'm saying? They put a little more effort into it. It felt like they were trying to make more of an actual Spider-Man movie. Right. Like, I'll, I can give it that. Uh, the first film made me angry, but this one just kind of made me depressed. But, like, I was really, I was disappointed because I saw that first scene and I was like, you know what? Maybe they're learning. Maybe they're kind of getting the hang of it. And then Gwen says, at this time, we all should feel like we're immortal because the best thing about life is that it ends. And I was like, they didn't learn anything at all. But <laughs> like, even in that, even in the first scene, like, I, I do want them and I do like the fact that they're trying to make Spider-Man... Uh, you know, more jokey, more like the comic book version. Like, when he was whistling his theme song when he was doing all the web shit, I was like, you know what, maybe they're doing something here. Yeah, maybe maybe this could work. It, it is, it's ruined It's ruined by the writing, though, because the dialogue is just so terrible. Like, right. there's, there's, like I, I, don't, I really hate Andrew Garfield as, as Spider-Man, but he really doesn't even have anything to work off of anyways. Like, right. um, the dialogue was so, so terrible. Um, every time they might, try, like, try to make a joke... Um, it, it runs on way too long. It's right. it's, it's like a bad Family the, Guy skit. <laughs> the fucking um uh, the, the scene where Gwen goes to Oxford and he's oh. like oh, like and he's trying to be British and shit. I was just like, please make it. Fun. I think that, like like I think I, like the joke is there that Andrew Garfield is British. Yeah, but but it's it not... doesn't. It's still so like I feel bad for people in Britain who are watching this scene right now. And they got it first, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, every time there was a scene like that, I just wanted to pound, like, nails into my skull. Because it just drags on yeah, I was just like, please make it stop. And, like, and they flat out ripped jokes off from the old movies and did them worse. Like, um, the scene where, like, Aunt May won't let him wash his clothes because, like, his, his suit yeah. and the whole thing, red, red and blue. Cool. That was totally ripped off from Spider-Man 2. Uh, and, and then, but he makes the excuse that he had to wash the American flag. It's like <laughs> that was that was like my biggest fuck you moment of this movie. Or it's like in the first movie, like the first Amazing Spider-Man, it was like when he was doing that skateboarding scene. Mm -hmm. That that was like the fuck you moment in, in that film. This was that like that that scene with the uh, washing machine was was that kind of moment. For and and the chimney movie. shit too, where he's like. Why is your face all black? He was, and he was like, I was cleaning the chimney. Yeah. And she was like, we don't have a chimney. He's like, what? They, like, they, they ripped that off from the first Spider-Man. It was like, yeah. don't come in, Aunt May. I'm not dressed. <laughs> but it's like they take they take small jokes and they stretch them out like a minute longer than they need to. You really be. should be. <laughs> like when him and Gwen were in the closet or whatever, and he's, and he's like, you literally picked the worst like place to hide. And she was like, sorry, I didn't pick the fucking Hawaii play of hiding spots. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Also, I like how with that scene, so so Gwen goes into the Oscorp computers and they find out she's snooping around. Right. So, so the guards chase her and they hide in the closet, but then it cuts away and we never find out what happened. Yeah. And then the rest of the movie has, like, I guess she got away from Oscorp forever? Like, they're not searching for her despite the fact that she knows the truth that can... And, and she works there. Yeah. It's like no one, no one's really paying attention to anything that's happening in this movie. Um, and can we also talk about Ghost Dad? Oh my god! <laughs> Glenn's father's ghost. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> that fucking stupid shit. Every time he shows up, it's so hilarious. <laughs> At the very end, when he's about to fight Electro, and he sees the fucking Ghost Dad. It's like just giving that stern look. <laughs> Because it's like, I, I felt like the writers were actually trying to address how shitty that ending was in the first movie. Yeah, you know, and I was like, you know what? Because they did that in the first scene, too. When he was passing by the cop car and he saw the ghost dad. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Maybe they're trying. Because I knew that was shit. You knew that was shit. 
I'm sure a whole lot of other people knew that was a really shitty fucking thing for him to do. Yeah. And he sees a ghost set, and I feel like, you know what? He's breaking up with her now, and he keeps seeing the ghost dad. Maybe they're addressing that him saying that really wasn't the smartest idea, but then what do you know? Yeah. They get back together. Like, it feels like, because it, it definitely kind of made it seem like Gwen and Peter have had this argument a lot. Yeah, right. So, he, but it kind of pisses me off, because like, okay, now, so he is totally aware of, of that promise with her dad, but he mm-hmm. can't commit to anything. Right. So not not no, not only is he is he an asshole for that he's just a plain asshole boyfriend. Yeah, he's he, an he just leads him. Gwen on. Um, so it's like everything with Peter Parker in this movie is, is so out of character. Like there there are a lot of things like if people want to say they like these movies, I I like it's your opinion. I'm not. I, I'll give it to you. Just please don't tell. Try to tell me that Andrew Garfield is somehow a more faithful representation of Peter Parker. Yeah, Hunger. absolutely not. Because people absolutely were arguing not. that in the thread I was in on the Vesti last night, and it's like, I can't even begin to to, 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 to argue against that, because, Peter like, Parker was never that much of a douchebag, I'll tell you that much right yeah. now. Like, the, the thing about comic book characters is they've been around for so long that like, they're, they're written by so many people, so, like, their character does kind of change over time, and I get right. that. And I get that this is supposed to be a different interpretation. All that's fine. But, like, the same thing with the first movie and the fact that they fucked up the Uncle Ben stuff is that you can't you can't really call him Peter Parker if you fuck up the fundamental aspects of this character that makes yeah, him no. who he is. Yeah, no, it's like, it's like you have... Like, like, you can call someone Peter Parker if you take the basics and then you build off of that in a different way. Yeah. That's fine. But if you fuck up what is basically instrumental to his character, if you take away the foundation of his development, then it's almost like you have an entirely different character altogether, and that's what this feels like. Because yeah. some people are saying, like, oh, he's more like a normal teenager now, but it's like, then he's not really Peter Parker now, is he? Yeah, and not I mean, only is he not like a normal teenager, he's more like a socially... Like has a it's social... like he has autism. Yeah, he has a, he has some kind of disorder that makes him act this way. It's like he has autism. I'm telling you. Yeah, it, it was especially prevalent in the first movie, <laughs> and here you still get a little bit of the hint. You're trying to downplay it a little bit, but you still get it. You still get it when he's like, "Oh, I follow you several times a day," and she has no problem with it. It's like I. Uh... Yeah, like he's a, he's a more mature version of the character in the first movie, but that's still not a very good character. Um, right. Like the point I made, like you, you know those people who get up in the front of class and tape themselves giving PowerPoint presentations on My Little Pony. That's yes. that's who this is. That's who Peter <laughs> Parker is in these in these movies. Like he's the creepy kid that doesn't talk to anyone, and like he gets older and he breaks out of his shell a bit, but he's still but fucking not, creepy. Yeah, right. I mean, not to the point where it erases his social flaws, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just, I, I don't even feel like Andrew Garfield is that good of an actor. Like, it, I, I gave How him... How about... Oh, no, he's going, I'm sorry. I, I, like, I gave him the benefit of doubt in the first movie because everything about it was, like, it was poorly written and directed, and so was this. But, like, at some point, you gotta be able to carry yourself. You, you gotta be able to elevate yourself above the material. And yeah, you right. And can't do that. How about when he said, um, uh, this is off topic a little bit, well, Andrew Garfield said that he wants Mary Jane to be a guy. <laughs> he said a lot of things. Did he say he wanted Spider-Man to be Jewish or something? Yeah, he said that too. It, it's like, the, I, I don't necessarily have things against that, but it's just, it, it tells you his state of mind where he's trying... Yeah, he doesn't want to be, he wants to be different, you know what I'm he, saying? Yeah, he wants to be the exact opposite of what Tobey Maguire was. Right. So, I, I I can understand, and quite frankly, I don't mind them taking a different path. Right. But, but at the same time, then don't don't try to be like you are. Yeah. Don't you know? don't take the wrong path that goes over a cliff, which is what they did. Um, and you and you know what? Even thinking back to that, there was someone who accused me, like when I was writing up what I didn't like about this movie, they basically accused me of of wanting a, a literal adaptation of the comics in in these movies. And that's a lot of what, what my problems were. And I don't really agree with that because, first of all, I don't really need 
like a literal adaptation. I felt like I already got that with Spider-Man 2. Like that was the perfect classic Spider-Man story. Mm -hmm. So I don't need you to redo Spider-Man 2. I want you to do something it entertaining. Yeah, it doesn't have to be better. It doesn't even have to be as good. It just has to be something that that's relevant, that's entertaining, that's that's something I want that's to watch. That's not a complete fucking mess. Yeah. So like it, part of me does wish that they would make a Spider-Man movie that doesn't have Peter Parker. Like, have someone else as as Spider-Man. Have, like, Miles Morales or something like that. Yeah, I, I would be totally for that. Um, you, don't, you don't need to change who Peter Parker is. You can just do someone different. Because not only can that character still have the same traits that make Peter like the likable character that he is, but he he can have he can come from a different background and face different challenges that Peter doesn't face that's different and interesting. Right. So how'd you, how'd you feel about JJJ in this movie? Oh you mean that one email he sent? Yes. <sighs> it's like I, I know there was too much shit in this movie all already but it's like you can't go two movies without and one of the best it. aspects of the Spider-Man franchise missing. Because <laughs> you know what? They're, they're afraid because they can't top fucking, um, uh, they, they can't top how he's portrayed in the first three. Yeah. You really can't. It's like, uh, I guess the response to that is, okay, we'll just bring him back because it doesn't matter whether he was you know, in the old movies or not. But I feel like he would not even fit at all in this No, universe. he really wouldn't. He would just be way too over the top. Like, I don't even know what a Jameson in this universe would be like. It's just, I, I can't really comprehend it. Yeah, because, right. Like, everyone in this universe, other than, like, like Gwen Stacy feels like Gwen Stacy. But every, but that's because Gwen isn't was never really much of a character to begin with. But everyone else doesn't feel like they're the character they're supposed to be. Everyone's different for the sake of being different. I, and I'm, I'm kind of afraid to see what they're going to do with Mary Jane and Rockin' All. <laughs> Hopefully they recast her, for one. Like, Well, I mean, Shailene Woodley isn't a bad actress, but... Like... I don't know if she's, She doesn't look at Gwen State. She doesn't look at Mary Jane, though. Yeah, I don't know if it's you or someone else who said they're they trying to go more for, like, I guess the ultimate Mary Jane, who's not, like, the supermodel type. Yeah, right. But, again, you're just doing something different for the sake of being For the different. sake of being different, exactly. So, so I feel like that's what this whole entire movie is. Yeah, I, I would be fine with them not introducing MJ and just using Felicia instead. Like, have her be And the they had first. Felicia in the movie. Yeah, for, like, two scenes. <laughs> um, I don't know, I've, I've wanted to see Black Cat in a fucking Spider-Man movie for a long time. But it's just one of those things where, like, well, you're going to fuck her up, too, now, aren't you? Like, why even bother? So, like, where, like, where is this going to go? Because they're going to do a Sinister Sticks movie. So right. is this going to lead to And also that? a Venom movie. Yeah, so where does Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 3 go? <laughs> like, do they do the Sinister Six and then give the Sinister Six their own movie? It's like, how do you do a Sinister Six movie without Spider-Man? Yeah. <laughs> You really don't, I guess. I feel, I feel like, like th they so obviously want to have their own Avengers universe with all these multiple films that connect yeah, to right. each other, but like, y you don't really have a plan. You're just going off the seat of your ass here. So I mean, are we gonna have Sinister Six and then Venom, or are we gonna have Sinister, Sinister, Amazing Spider-Man three, then Sinister Six, and then Amazing Spider-Man four, and then Venom, or are they gonna? Yeah, like, and, or they're gonna try and cram Sinister Six and Venom into the same movie, and then give them each their own spin-offs. Or yeah. like, and do do you do the black suit again? Do you not do the black suit again? How do you uh, introduce? Venom? You can't do Venom without doing the black suit. Well, yeah, but it's like how how are they gonna do that again? I feel like that's not gonna work. Like I like I I feel like it's very hard to do in a movie to begin with. Right. Because first of all, you have to spend half the movie with Peter being an asshole. Right. Like, he's not really likable. So in Spider-Man three, they try to make him funny, but people didn't get that and didn't like even it. Even in even in the animated series, I think they did it the best. Yeah. I think that was I think that was probably the best portrayal of the whole black suit thing. Yeah. So, but, but the difference is like, gonna... like three three twenty minute episodes is a lot easier to do than you know a two and a half hour movie where they kind of well, have. Well, yeah. 
Why, why don't you have him be the black suit for one half of the movie and then Venom for the second half of the movie? Yeah, but it's tricky. Like, does is Venom interesting enough character or interesting enough a villain to carry a movie by himself? Yes, if you do him right. If you don't make him played by Toe for fucking Grace. <laughs> See, I don't think that was a bad choice, but... Like, like. Well, like, it, it, it's a bad choice in the sense that Venom is supposed to be a bodybuilder. Yeah, but Eddie Brock isn't really interesting. Like, like, he's just he's just a meathead who hates Spider Man because, like, you know, he ruined his career. That's that's. And he's got and he's got cancer and shit too. We got like, like, I mean, there's a lot of facets to his character, and they really rushed it a lot in the third movie. And I, like, I, I, I Venom is a character I wouldn't mind them doing something different with. Right, um, but like, uh, fuck the. Only because there's so many routes that you can go with him. I, I want. I would really like to see the Flash Thompson Venom. Like, I think that would be a really cool story. He wasn't in this movie at all, was he? No, he his he was, but his scenes got cut. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> nice. But I, I doubt he would have been much. He probably would just shown up at the graduation and that's it. Yeah. Right. Um. um what yeah, what my, else? Can we talk about? My my only my only real hope that is like. Like they're obviously this movie's obviously gonna make money, so my hope right. is that they look at the reviews and see like we need to do something different. Yeah, right. I mean, you know what? You know what scares you though? Because no matter what, it's still a Spider-Man movie, and they're still gonna be making a lot. They're still gonna be making money. You know, yeah. it's set for a really good opening weekend. This movie's actually gonna make less money than Captain America, so. Like, how, how low has Spider-Man fallen on the tier list of superheroes that he's now making less money than Captain America? Well, I mean, Captain America was a really good movie, I'm oh, not going to oh, lie. no doubt about that, but it's just like, like, Marvel managed to turn Captain America, which no one really cared about, into this big franchise, where Sony's done the opposite. They've took this character that everyone loves, and they've driven him to the ground that now it's making less money than I mean, than you everyone. know what? Spider-Man 3 was, like, the most expensive movie of all time to make for a little while, and... I mean, they realized that it didn't really pay off as well as they wanted it to, so it makes sense that they're kind of moving in a different direction in terms of Spider-Man, but Spider-Man is definitely their most iconic, like, hero, just as much as, you know, Batman and Superman is DC's most iconic, yeah. and it's kind, of, it's kind of indicative that, you know, there's Iron Man becoming really popular, even though no one really knew Iron Man before the movies. Captain America, no one gave a crap about him at all, and then the movies came along, and it's like, all right, now we got Captain America going on here, and Captain America Two is probably my favorite Marvel movie. Yeah, it was really good. So, I liked it. I liked it a, lot, a hell of a lot more than the Avengers. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> well, it goes to show, like, all you got to do is make good movies, and then people will care about these characters. Yeah, right. It's not even a matter of how popular the superhero is or how iconic they are, because Spider Man is fucking iconic. But if you don't have good material, then, you know, you're going to get put in the dust by something else. Yeah, but, it, it, like, Spider-Man absolutely deserves better than this, and that's what kind of pisses me off the most. Mm. Um, and, and qu quite frankly, depresses me, because I don't think it's going to change. Like, they should they should go in a different direction, but I don't think they are. I think they, they, want, they want to do this path to their Avengers universe, whatever they're doing. Right. It, they're just not going to deviate from that. Like m maybe they get a different director, and then maybe we get a good Spider-Man movie once Andrew Garfield is done with these films. Which sounds Sony's like, never going to give up that contract, though. Sony's not going to give up the contract, and that's fine to a certain extent. It's just like put different people in charge of your movies. Um, you know, it sounds like Andrew Garfield only wants to do one more Spider-Man movie. So good. Get someone yeah, else right. that's more fitting of the. And movie. there's a contract for four movies. So. You know, don't don't hire the writers of Transformers Two to write your sequel. That's no, don't right. do that. It's just like every every decision that they can make goes goes the wrong way. Um, oh, and there was there was totally one point that I forgot to bring up. That's that's I think maybe the the thing that pissed me off about the most uh, the most about this movie is that they made Spider Man. Um, the only person who could ever become Spider-Man. Like, it was his destiny to become Spider-Man. Did you notice that? Mm. Like, when when they, when they his father made it, um, coded to his DNA. Like, I, I didn't get that because it's like, then how is it going to work for, like... For Harry? Yeah. 
No, how is it going to work for anyone? Oh, it doesn't. If, if, the, if the point of the spiders is to have it so that they heal people, and you make them code through a specific person's DNA, then they're only going to work for that one person. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like maybe he made that change after he found out what Osborne was going to do. Maybe. Um, but even then, it, you essentially made it so only Peter can become Spider-Man, so he's no longer like... Like like the kind of accidental hero that he's supposed to be. Yeah, right. Like he, he was he was meant to be. Yeah, that way. like now he's destined to be the hero, and it's just like that completely undermines the entire point of Spider-Man. Yeah, right. The whole point of Spider-Man is that anyone can do it. Yeah, it's like he he was just a normal kid, you know, above average intelligence, but a normal kid. It's like Captain America. Yeah, it's like you know he gets a chance, and then he's he's not a hero because he wants to be. He's a hero because. He feels responsible, like he was given these powers. Now, now he has to do it, and and like they totally missed that. You know, the, they still haven't found Uncle Ben's killer, and that was not brought yeah, up at all. They totally movie. dropped that plot point. Yeah, and it's funny because like the 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 the, um, the Amazing Spider-Man Two game starts out with that. Like that's the beginning of the game, going to find the killer. Is it really? Yeah. So even the game gets it better than the movie. Ugh. I just, I don't understand how they can make so many wrong decisions. Like, do you? <laughs> I, I, it's not possible, but they did it. It's like they, they did the impossible. Yeah. And they, and they made worse decisions than they did in the first one. Like, some of them they tried to fix it, but then they just, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, t I, like, I'm totally at a loss here. Like, this should have been, even if it wasn't the kind of Spider-Man movie I wanted to see, it still It wasn't a good Spider-Man movie in general, though. Yeah, but it still should have been a better movie. It Like, they, they had the chance to fix their mistakes, and yeah, maybe everything supporting the movie is not the best, but you can still make... And entertaining. Even if the movie's dumb, it can still be fun. Right. This is, this is just dumb and not fun. Because you know what? They're, they're trying to make it dumb, but at the same time they're trying to make it serious. The movie doesn't know what it fucking wants. Oh, totally, yeah. Um. <laughs> and I don't get the people that say Dane Dahan was the best part of the movie. Yeah. Can I just, like... Get open question for anybody who listened up to this point. God bless you. <laughs> um... Why did you like Dane Dahan? Why? Give me reasons, please. I'm curious to know. Yeah. Like I said, I don't feel like he's a bad actor, but he was acting... But he's in not a good in the role. Yeah, he was, he was in a completely different movie. <laughs> and, like, whoever he was was not Harry Osborn. It's just like, you know, at, at least try to summon the basic, you know, aspects of a character... Before you take it off into a different direction, that ends up being way over the top. Yeah, no, it was it was pretty crazy. And it's just like you know, if that was if that was what they were going for, it works. But that's not what they were going for. That's the unintended consequences of the tone right. of the movie. It's, it's they're not trying to make a stupid movie. I mean, like stupid, you know, cheesy. They're supposed to make they want it to be lighthearted, but it's not. It's just over the top and dumb. Right, right. So, you know, I, I <laughs> yeah, I'm just at a complete loss. Like, I, I remember like two years ago, we were like, you know what, the next one's probably not going to be very good, but we can give it a chance. You know, there's, there's a chance they'll learn. There's a chance they'll do something better, but they, they didn't. It's like, we're right back where we started. I, I don't get it at all. I'm so confused. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've been going for about... Uh, An hour. Was, yeah, about that. So, uh, Final thoughts on The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Frank? It's shit. <laughs> do, you think, do you think people should go see this movie to check it out for themselves? If you like the first movie, God bless you. Go see it. If you didn't, then don't. Yeah. Please. I, I, I can in good conscience recommend this. You know what? I, I'm all for people having different opinions. If you like these movies, 
Fine. I will never, for the life of me, for the rest of my goddamn life, I will never understand you. I, I will never be able to contemplate the point yeah, of view. Yeah, but you know what? If you like the movie, God bless you. Go see it. Have fun. If oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock on you for liking the movie. I didn't like it at all. You can do whatever you want to, but I'm never gonna recommend this movie. People to like, yeah, people like bad movies. That's fine. The one thing I don't want you to do, don't tell me this is somehow a better representation of what a Spider-Man movie is. Oh, absolutely be. not. You can't it, say in that. In no way, shape, or form is this a good Spider-Man movie. It's you can think it's a good movie, just don't tell me it's a good Spider-Man movie. It's absolutely not a good Spider-Man movie. Yeah. And it's absolutely yeah. not... It's not even a... It's not a good movie by any means. No. So you can't even say it's a good Spider-Man movie. Yeah. But that's just the way it is. Yeah. So... Uh, I guess we'll, uh... We'll wrap up here. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll meet back here in 2016 for The Amazing yeah, Spider-Man Yeah, right, for 3. Amazing Spider-Man Because they announced that, like, months beforehand, before this movie even came out, so... Yeah, no. They, they announced Amazing Spider-Man 2 after Amazing, before Amazing Spider-Man 1 even came out. So yep. it's like, what are you gonna do? So, I look forward to doing this again in two years, Frank. Alright. <laughs> See you then. Bye. Bye.